out there. All right, so in this video, we're going to be looking at flooding, uh, but more specifically, storm hydrographs. All right, so let's just start off with this example. If we imagine we have got the river in the middle here, we've got a wide, flat valley either side. Now, if we have area A, area B. So area A, we imagine, is rural. Area B is urban. So let's draw some lovely houses because it's an urban area. And let's draw some other type of office buildings. And remember that the surface of urban areas is covered in concrete or tarmac. And these are impermeable. Which basically means the water will run off. So you'll have increased surface runoff and little infiltration. So the water's going to get to the river quick. Also, we have drainage systems, which when the water runs off the tarmac, concrete, whatever, it is going to end up going straight down here and straight into the river. All right, so if you imagine a cloud up here, it's going to get from there really quickly into the river. So in terms of like storm hydrographs, that's going to have a steep rise in limb because the discharge is going to get high quickly and a short lag time, the time it takes from the precipitation to get from there to there. On the opposite side, A, we've got a rural area. So rural areas have got lots of trees, like this. All right, the ground is going to be covered in, I don't know, grass, and soil so here's a bit of grass now when it rains over here all right rather than just going straight to the ground straight to the river it hits the leaves of all the trees so that's going to add time it takes to get to the river so that's going to increase lag time so if i just put a one there you've got vegetation interception now the ground is permeable so when any raindrops do land and get to the floor they're going to infiltrate into the ground and eventually you'll have groundwater flow and through flow taking the water to the river but that is going to take an awful long time Okay, so if we have a look at that, and now I'm going to have a look at draw, putting that data into a storm hydrograph. So, I'm just making this up as I go along, but this is the basic principle. So, we get our y-axis and we get our x-axis. Alright, get to about there. So, along the x you have got time, and for ease in this we're going to say it's in hours so i don't know one o'clock two o'clock three o'clock four o'clock five o'clock six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen twenty four hour clock fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen oh twenty okay so that's time along the bottom and obviously the further along you are the longer it's been up the side, we have got river discharge. Don't overcomplicate this. Discharge is just the amount of water in the river, and we represent that with a line, okay? And this is measured in cumex or cumex, okay? And it's cubic meters per second of water, all right? So if you imagine a cube, a meter tall, that's how much water's going in there. I'm just going to make this up. Let's just say it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay? This is where it gets a bit tricky, but it, it, it's, it's enough to get stressed about. On this x-axis, you also have precipitation or rainfall. So this is the water in the river. This side is showing the rainfall. And that's linked to the line. This is linked to the bars. 
So if we just put there precipitation, and we'll say this is in millimetres. All right, and let's just say 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. Now, in reality, if there was that much water, there would be a massive, massive flood. All right, so we need some bars. So because I've done that in red, not the most traditional colour, but I'm going to use this colour for the rainfall because it's pinky colour. All right, so let's say at 3 o'clock we have 10 millimetres of rain. So it starts to rain. 4 o'clock we have 15 millimetres. 5, this is the heaviest rainfall of the whole storm, 20 millimetres. And then the storm starts to fade and we go back down. Okay, so along the time, this is rainfall. Started at 3, it rained till 7. So it rained for 4 hours with the peak rainfall coming in here at 20 mil. So this is peak rainfall. Alright, so if I do a little key up here as well, this might help you. So that is rainfall or precipitation. Alright, now we need two rivers. So we're going to have a river in an urban area. We'll have that in green. So that's the one we'll start with, urban. Now remember, we'll flip back, urban. The rain hits the concrete, goes down the drain, goes to the river. And we will have yellow for rural. Alright, and if we flip back again, rural, the precipitation has to hit the trees, vegetation interception, takes a long time to infiltrate, and through flow takes it to the river eventually, a long time later. All right, so let's get to the urban river then. So, this is where the river starts. This is its base flow at 2 cumex. And as soon as it starts to rain, the river's going to get deeper, deeper. Discharge is going to increase. And let's say it increases till it reaches its peak at 11 cumex. All right? And then, because a river's basically a big drain pipe, it then goes back down quite quickly until eventually it will return to its base flow. Now if you notice, like I just said, the time it takes for the rainfall to get to the river is quite short in cities and urban areas because of the drainage systems. So the lag time all right, between peak rainfall and peak discharge is short. All right. Now, on the way up, as the river's getting deeper, we call this the rising limb. So you'd have a steep rising limb. Because it's in a city and all the water's going onto the tarmac, not infiltrating, high surface runoff going down the drain. Once it's got its peak discharge, it's probably flooded, but the water's then draining away quite quickly, so we also have a steep falling limb. Okay? And all that green line is, is showing the water in the river. Now, if another area that's affected by the same flood is a rural area, all right, this would be a lot different. All right, so let's say the river just starts a bit lower just so it doesn't look too messy. So this is the base flow. It starts raining, and yeah, the river is going to rise, but all that infiltration and all that vegetation interception is taking its toll, and it's meaning that the water takes a lot longer to get to the river. Peak discharge happens a lot later, and then it gently drains away because the water's still seeping through the ground filling the river up so this is good this is what you'd want to see here between peak that's a bit higher isn't it between peak rainfall and peak discharge 
is a lot longer. All right, in this hypothetical situation, you've got an extra one, two, three, an extra three hours to prepare and stuff like that. So you've got a long lag time. Now, the rainfall takes longer to get to the river, so the river gets deeper, slower, so you have a gentle rising limb. And because that water is still in the ground, it's still soaking into the river, it's draining away more slowly, you also have a gentle falling limb. Okay, so that is, in a few minutes, how to draw contrasting storm hydrographs. You could also say, well, that could be in an area with steep relief or impermeable, ge impermeable geology. We've looked mainly at land use. Uh, or you could say that this is a modern sustainable uh, flood prevention system, which means that the ground is made of permeable material, like a boss castle permeable uh, car parks, but in general, urban land use looks like that, rural land use looks like that. The end.